All right, guys, we're recording. All right. So what I want to do is uh, talk about the homework first. Make sure you guys are comfortable with this. For those who missed, because a lot of people missed class yesterday, um, what we did is we solved a system of equations using matrices. So right here, that's a system of equations. You got three equations, three variables. Uh, you can also do it for two equations, two variables, or four equations, four variables, whatever you want. But what you need to do is you need to organize all the information in the system of equations into a matrix. So you have a coefficient matrix, you have a variable matrix, and you have what we I like to call a constant matrix. And if you do the multiplication, you realize that here, I got a three by three with a three by one, right? So again, I'm just recapping the notes. Um, and for those who are not here, um, I did have a recording that I put in school, so you can check that out as well. So a three by three with a three by one, as long as these link up, multiplication can happen. So you have one, 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 multiply X, Y, Z, and you add up all the products. So you get X plus Y plus Z equals the number on the other side, negative one. And you rinse and repeat with the second and third rows. That's why you get 3x minus 2y minus 4 is equal 16. 2x minus y plus z equals 19. So it backtracks to what we had originally. That's a good thing. We want that. Well, there is a technique I think that's better than what we did yesterday. It's called using inverse matrices, but we're not going to cover that, unfortunately, in this class. So that's I think it's a lost opportunity, but it's okay. Um, but what you could do is could, um, rearrange these matrices into an augmented matrix. So you kind of reshape it in a way where now you make a three by four matrix, three rows of four columns. So basically you merge the left matrix and the right matrix into one matrix. Uh, the X, Y, Z just goes away. And the goal is to get to, uh, to do all these different operations to the rows, to get something nice, you know, like a nice elegant solution like this, where you have one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So this is actually called an identity matrix. So anything times this matrix maintains its identity. If you actually were to multiply three by three by this, the original three by three would stay intact. So it's kind of like multiplying by one. It just stays the same. So anyway, that's the goal is to try to um, do all these different row operations, row swaps. And so that's what we did. Um, I know the solution is not shown here, but um, no, it's not shown here either. Okay, it is kind of shown here where we make this augmented matrix and we do all these different operations to the rows to get this uh, nice elegant solution with like the ones and the diagonals. And once you have that, whatever is in the far right, that's going to be the solution for X, Y, and Z, or whatever variables we're solving for. So that's what we did. We're going to do it again today. So don't worry. We're going to do it again today. But what we're going to see today is what happens if you have no solution or implementing solution. How's that going to look? It's going to be kind of weird. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the homework is right here. Those are just the answers. They don't have to work out. I think some might, have work, some might be worked out. But like here, you're asked to solve the system. I know you guys can solve two by twos by elimination or substitution, like old school ways you did in middle school or we took um, Algebra 1 here in ninth grade or Algebra 2. We probably did that as well. So you could use that, but we're using matrices as well. Obviously, the answers are just shown here. I don't think any of these are worked out, unfortunately. Do you want me to work out any of these? I'm more than happy to work out one of them. I can't do them all. If I can work out one of them, you want me to. Any of these you'd like me to work out? You do uh, five. I'll do five. Great. And for those who are not here, you can see the process. So we'll, we'll, we'll do it all in, in all its glory. So here's what we're going to do. One, one, negative one, negative two, two, negative one, one, five, negative one, two, two, one. Okay, so that's the first thing. You got to set it up. Not hard, right? You guys are good there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what do we do? <laughs> you want, here's what you want eventually. Eventually, you want this one, zero, 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 one, zero. Zero, zero, one. This is eventually what you want. And you have a bunch of numbers here. Why do you want that? Because what this means, this means that X will equal whatever number that is. Y will equal whatever number that is. Z will equal whatever number that is on, on the far right side. Because these are uh, the coefficients of X, Y, and Z in order. That's one X plus zero Y plus zero Z. Zero X plus one Y plus zero Z. Zero X, zero Y, one Z equals each of these numbers here. That's what we want that. So we have to do all these um, things to this to make that happen. Like things meaning row switches or row changes, row transformations. So I think what I'll do is this. And it, it really is kind of open-ended in some ways. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll add row one to row three. Why do you think I'm doing that? Why do you think I want to add? Why do you think I want to add row one to row three? What will that accomplish? Equal zero. You get zero for the first entry, right? You get zero. Three, 
one, negative one. Okay. So we're okay there. I'm also going to um, add row one to row two as well. Actually, that would be a bad choice. I'm going to add row two. I'm going to add row two to row one. W why do you think I'm going to do that? I get zero in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And zero here again. Yep, yep. And three there. Oh, look at that. That came out very nice. And then I'll keep the second row intact. I won't change that just yet. Um, okay. So now I'm going to multiply the third, sorry, the first row by one third. So I can't do threes here. Why do I think I'm going to do that? One, zero, zero, one. Okay, cool. That looks good to me. And then I'll, um, what should I do next? I think here. I think I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, actually, let me multiply the second row by negative one. That way I get one in the middle. And I'll leave this alone for now. Okay, I think now I'm getting somewhere. Um, I'm going to do 2 R1 plus R2. Why well, do I think I'm doing that? What will that accomplish? Makes that zero, right? Makes that still one, makes that still negative one, makes that um, negative three. Okay. Zero. And at the same, no, nah, I, I won't touch that. I'll leave that alone. Okay. Because I'm running out of space, I'm just going to kind of cycle back. Okay. So we'll cycle back. I know, terribly exciting stuff. All right. <laughs> you get to negative three R2. Ah, nah, it's all good. It's a long day. It's my fourth straight class. I should be yawning too, right? Negative three R2 plus R3. So the first rows are all good now, right? So if I do that, I get um, zero, zero, uh, three plus one is four, and nine plus negative one is eight. Zero, one, negative one. And then, I think I'm almost done here. I'm going to multiply this by one fourth. This comes zero, zero, one, two, one, zero, zero, one. Um, and then I, I'm going to do um, R3 plus four R2. So zero, one, zero. And I'll be negative. Hold on. That's a uh, negative twelve. Long trip in here. R three plus four. Okay, I think I think I might just let me let me let me leave the second row alone. Because I think that might make things a little better. Okay, now I'm finally done. I'm going to do this. I'm simply going to add. Yeah, because I was trying to do too much at one time. Because I got I got to change the row, then apply it to the next one. I was trying to change too much at one time. I think that was just happening. Zero, zero, one, two. Now I'm going to do R3 plus R2, which is zero, one, zero, negative one. Boom, there we go. One, negative one, and two, which works. This is not on the final exam. Don't worry. But we're going to have a quiz on this. And the quiz on it, I could either do it Friday or Monday or Tuesday. It's up to you. Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday it is. I'll do it on Tuesday, guys.
Not in the final. We're gonna have a quiz on this instead. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. If you want to do the quiz on Friday, can you want to do it on Tuesday? That's fine. Or if you want to do it another time, that's fine too. But if you can't do it Tuesday, then you can do it Wednesday. Yes, right. Yes. Yes. That's fine. Um, or you could just come during office hours anytime. That's fine too. So, but it's required. You guys have to get it done. So, um, anyhow, so we'll have a quiz on this stuff. Now, what from matrices are we going to put on the final? In all likelihood, it's just going to be really the basics. Like, we're going to say, hey, can you multiply two matrices? Like, for example, can you do something like this problem? Well, actually, that can't be done. But like something like example, like five or six, right? And so that'd be pretty straightforward. Uh, something like just combination of adding and subtracting matrices. So something like example four. And then what we're going to do... Um, Tomorrow, not tomorrow, uh, Friday, you'll see when we when we get there. So that's really it. I mean, it's it's really gonna be pretty basic. It won't actually, if anything, those should be three points. So, um, okay. So I'm done going over that homework. Done going. Over this. Let's let's do the notes. It's only two pages of notes, very short. We're gonna look at situations where you have one solution, no solution, infinite many solution. Sorry, no solution, infinite many. There's only the two examples today. Okay. And just so you see how it looks from the um, Gauss-Jordan method. And then uh, we'll have um, homework you guys will work on. And that's it. And we're, we're pretty much done for today. Okay, here we go. So everything we've done so far is that one solution. And if you think about one solution, like we have two equations, two variables, it's like two lines touching and they touch at one point. Now we have three variables. It's actually a plane. I know it's kind of hard to visualize. So this is actually a three-dimensional diagram. You have these planes here that intersect in space. In the intersection themselves, they're thought to be at a point. But sometimes that might not be the case. Sometimes these planes miss each other. Sometimes these planes overlap. That could happen. The lines of planes are exactly the same, or the lines of planes never intersect. So let's talk about how this looks for this situation here. Now, I know this is going to be weird. How do I know it's going to be weird? Look at the um, proportions. What if I multiply this by negative two? You get that. Good. What if I multiply this by three? You get this. You do. These are identical equations. That is a big tell. You know it's going to be infinitely many solutions. I know that's going to be the answer because they're the same thing. I already know this. Again, this won't be on the final exam, but it could be on the quiz. So I know this, but how does it look algebraically? Because sometimes it could be somewhat disguised perhaps. Um, so let's do it. And this actually won't take very long. It's actually pretty short and you'll see why. What if I do two R1 plus R2 and simultaneously do negative three R1 plus R3? I'm gonna need a little more space here. So you get zero, 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 zero. You're kind of screwed at this point because you're kind of stuck with this. Now, how are you supposed to solve this, right? But what's happening is you also have this too. And you have it happening again. 
when this happens, is that a true statement? Does zero equal zero? Yeah, totally. So what this tells me is that anything will work for X and Y and Z. Anything will work. Well, not anything will work, but there's multiple situations that work. So that's why we have infinite negative solutions. So, so good. Instantly say that. No, you, you know, instantly say it's infinite many solutions because what happens is that when you do the row reduced echelon form, you want to cancel out all these terms here. Well, you can tell by looking at it, but actually, you want to do I, I will say that we do that, but it doesn't take much. So it's only really just one step. So. Yeah, that's all. It's that simple. And then here, Okay, three, one, three, one. Now, these are identical. That's not. These are actually two lines in the same slope, but different y intercepts. These are parallel lines that never touch, right? Parallel lines never touch. But if you go through the motions, fine, let's do it. I'll do um, negative R1 plus R2, keep R1 intact. Zero, zero, negative nine. That's a problem. Because you're saying zero X plus zero Y. We're saying zero equals negative nine. That's a false statement. That can't be true. So when that happens, what do we say? No solution. That's all. There are the notes for today. We're done. It's that short. So the homework is probably going to have, if I look at the answer key, I think it's going to have some that work out nicely, like we did uh, yesterday. But there'll be some that won't work out nicely. So like for the, if I sh I'll just show you the answer key. It's already up in school, Gene. Actually, it's not. I'll put everything up in school. I'll organize it for you guys. Like one works out nicely. Two works out nicely. Three does not. Four does not. Five, just write the system. Six does not. Seven, just review of old stuff. Eight does not, and that's all. So yeah, I'm all done for today.